everybody else for third place. Ben Adams just ahead of Fred Wakeman. They're going through Phil Quaid and Martin Stratton with the green crash helmet in the D-Type Jaguar in sixth place. So the D-Type, a successful Le Mans style car from 1955 onwards, that in the hands of Martin Stratton, one to watch as he pushes on to get right now onto the tail of Phil Quaid for James Thorpe's Lister Jaguar. Martin Stratton hustling on, but Ben Adams now trying to get away if he can from the more powerful cars behind him. Trouble is, he's already lost four seconds to these two, the race leaders, Marino Franchitti ahead of James Cottingham. And actually, Marino, for the moment, looking as though he's extending his margin because he's pulled another tenth within the first third of the lap. Stratton, number 27 in the D-type, crawling all over the back of the Mr. Jaguar flat iron, so called, in the hands of Phil Quaife. There's Cottingham's Tajiro Jaguar in second place. Raced here in the TT by Jim Clark and Marston Gregory. Ron Flockhart drove the car at Le Mans. But then behind is Fred Wakeman in the Cooper Jaguar T38, the ex Tommy Sopwith car. And that, in turn, is coming under renewed attack now from Phil Quay and Martin Stratton. And again, through Woodcock, where he doesn't really bother to break. So Ben Adams stretches the gap once more. So, as predicted, through the quickly bits, that car has the advantage. But in a straight line, the power of the cars behind Tatton. Somebody all over the grass there, getting it wrong, coming into the chicane. So that was round about the uh, Wilma Fiskin Young area of the pack. Trying to pick out who it was that got it all wrong there as the cars come over the line. Great noise with these cars, mate. Different shapes and sizes as well as different constructors try to win sports car races from 1952 to 1960. It was power was small engine and nimbleness or a big engine or the run the right way to go about it. And here a snapshot of the era on track. So number 11 heading towards us there, the Cooper Jaguar in the hands of charging Fred Wakeman, Martin Stratton still at the back of the pack. Martin's been a regular racer in the 90s for the revival events. Through the kink on Lavin straight goes Ben Adams. And here, still for Fred Wakeman's doing a really good job, but for how much longer Phil Quaife comes up to have a go? Can't squeeze past on the inside nor on the outside. Martin Stratton behind, waiting to see whether a gap might just present itself. Still the Cooper Jaguar hanging on there to full position. Fred Wakeman into the chicane. Phil Quaith going to be able to close under braking. Martin Stratton does in number 27. Easily distinguished by his green crash helmet that always stands out. Martin Stratton, no matter what you put him in, makes it go very, very quickly indeed. But right now, that D-type not quite seemingly quick enough in a straight line. Phil Quaith is quick enough, though, and he goes through on the inside, picks up a place, then goes by, and that gives him fourth, finally, on the inside of Madrid. Further back, Julian Majub in that Chevrolet-powered sand that we saw earlier on. That's up into now eighth place. And here comes Martin Stratton to see if he can get past Fred Wakeman. Not at Fordwater, he can't. Slots back in behind. So turn right, turn left through the sequence at St Mary's. There you can see Phil Quaid now trying to get away while behind him, Fred Wakeman is busy defending from Martin Stratton, who looks to the inside at Lavin Corner, brakes late, the car quivers under braking. Martin hit the brakes just hard enough to stop any contact there. He almost committed to that move, then realised it wasn't on. That's out of it, has to try again. Around and down, down and straight then, this lap five. Clock ticks on down, 12 and three quarter minutes. And up front still, Marino Frank Hitty is the race leader. Now they turn back into Woodcut. A double apex right. That brings the cars down towards the chicane. Good part of the circuit is to watch how the cars drift, you see. And then as they come out of the chicane, you're too eager with the throttle, the back step out of line, and it gives the driver a few seconds of concern as they try to correct it, straighten it out, and they come moving past the pits, down now towards the long, long right of Madwick. This gives you a chance to see exactly what Goodwood is like. It's not a totally flat circuit, but uh, an aerodrome, as well as a motor circuit. And its beautiful flowing nature lends itself to good racing, and especially, of course, lending itself to these period race cars. That would have raced here in the circuit's initial opening period. And they're looking across, across the countryside, with uh, a great example of how the cars look around the circuit. Absolutely ideal for them. Now, Phil Quaid in fourth place, going after Ben Adams in the Little Lola. There's sixth, Martin Stratton, number 27 in the D-type, pushing on in pursuit of Fred Wakeman. He's tried his luck once at Lavent. He almost thought about doing it again here, but 
Fred Wakeman just hangs on to it. Having to work so hard still behind the wheel. Finds an apex to the corner eventually, and then tails almost wagging. Out they come. On to Lavin straight. Stratton looks like he's got the speed. He just hasn't yet been able to quite outfox Fred Wakeman. Thinks about the outside on the run down to Woodcut. Almost alongside. Can Martin Stratton dive at the inside coming out of the corner? He thinks about it, but gets a face for the Fred Wakeman's Cooper Jaguar. So again, no real opportunity. Fred Wakeman breaks and late to the count of the chicane. Turns into the right and then the left. Martin Stratton hunched over the wheel, working oh so hard as they come up towards the line. Martin's been a winner here in by Ben Adams that time. Yes, I think he does have a problem. So Phil Quaid now released up into third place. He's been chipping his way forward. And look there, Martin Stratton has now also managed to find a way not only onto terms with Ben Adams, but he's got past Fred Wakeman in the process. Martin Stratton comes over the brow, then up towards St Mary's. There you have Fred Wakeman also going ahead of Ben Adams now. So sadly, a little Lola with a problem. And I fear that car there going into St Mary's is not long for the race now. So there you have coming through the right hand of Lambert Martin Stratton. So he's working his way forward. Fred Wakeman having lost that place, dropping back a little bit. He goes with more opposite lock being applied out of Lambert Corner. Accelerates down now towards Woodcut. And there is the Lola making a rather horrible noise as well. So it is bound for the pit lane after being on the front row of the grid. Real shame that because Ben Adams was driving the 1098cc car very rapidly indeed. There you've got the Fred Wakeman Cooper Jaguar. So having dropped away from Martin Stratton, running out of playmates, I'm afraid, is Fred Wakeman into the chicane he now comes with just under eight minutes still on the clock. Heads over the timing line, and the gap between the race leaders is definitely coming down. Marino Franchitti's advantage that was over three and a half seconds is down to 1.9. So there's Stratton up into fourth place. Needed, battle on lower down, Phil Quaif. Is he being caught for third by Martin Stratton? It was under a second at the start of this lap, so Martin still also taking the battle as best he can to Phil Quaif. We didn't see that much of Phil in historic racing. He's been a modern GT racer for many, many years, but now, like many, being tempted by not just historic racing, but, of course, by fabulous Goodwood events. That marker to negotiate. Phil Quaif commits to the inside, heading into Lavin. Does he go through on the inside there of the Cooper Jaguar T33? Katarina Kivlova's car back, number 33 on the outside there, once owned by Bernie Eccleston, who ran the late Stuart Lewis Evans and Peter Jopp in that car. So through past it they go, and uh, down now towards Woodcutts. This the battle is developing nicely for third and fourth places. Martin Stratton almost there. He's done many a mile around here in all manner of historic race cars. Has that man, Martin Stratton, racer and preparer, par excellence. Hooks a wheel onto the curb coming out of Woodcutt. Three and a half more minutes are on the clock as he comes now out of the chicane. So the leaders have already gone by with a second and a half between them. These cars are over half a minute back, but their battle is no less intense. You see the suspension working, you see the driver working behind the wheel. Great shot that as Martin Stratton leans on the D-type Jaguar, turning out of magic corner. On now towards Ford Water. traffic ahead of course now so this fight for third place Phil Quaife will be the pioneer the first one of the two to come along and find where the back markers are have they seen me have they not where does he commit number 25 there is the next one to negotiate the Cooper T49 the Cooper Monaco and next Jack Brown the Roy Salvadori car the white Cooper in the background they're being negotiated and Martin Stratton tries to seize upon that to get up the inside but to no avail Phil Quaife fends him off Leaders have gone through, incidentally, with the gap widening with two minutes of change on the clock. Number 77, another of the Coopers being negotiated there, Taraf Mahmood. Down in 14th place, he is. And now the Jaguars come up against the Alton Jaguar Sports to try to go either side of it. In the end, they both dive up the inside there to go ahead of the Mike Barker designed and raced car. There it is, the red one in the background. He's just got a lap down. That's uh, John Burton at the wheel. Phil Quaid keeping Martin Stratton at bay as they come into and out of the chicane almost as one here. 
So the race leading cars, the Maserati and Tajiro Jaguar respectively, about half a lap up the road, such is their pace. A flying lap at the moment for the leaders is a 1 minute 26. This battle is on for third place though. Phil Quaith keeping at bay, Martin Stretton. Out of Madwick corner they come, Martin is almost running out of ideas now because Phil Quaith just seems to have the answer to most things that Martin has tried thus far. What's up his sleeve? Out of Ford Water, up towards St Mary's. Martin Stratton has a cheeky look on the inside, trying to unsettle Phil Quaith, but that's not on. Phil defends beautifully, turns right, heads left now through the second element to St Mary's. You see the way that the front wheels twitch left and right as the driver makes the input to keep the car in exactly the direction it's needed to be. Nose to tail under braking here for Lavin Corner. Stratton turns right. Tails wag as the power kicks in. Onto Lavin straight they come. And that is where, seemingly, Phil Quay uh, sports racing cars. Second across the line, James Cottingham. And what about third? Here they are, they're not done yet. Martin Stratton still not really quite close enough to make a proper move against Phil Quay, but not for the want of trying. Blasting down now towards the right hand from Woodcut, then in turn towards the chicane. Stratton breaks late, but I think Phil Quaife has just done it up there. The first element of Woodcut drifts the second apex, straightens the car, or less, and up towards the chicane. And then you've got that long run up towards the timing line. The checkered flag is at the ready, and third place goes the way of Phil Quaife. Up from the third row of the grid, Martin Stratton.